In this video, we'll look at the disjunction rule, the rule for calculating the probability of a disjunction of events. Or in more familiar terms, given probabilities for events A and B, what is the probability that either A or B will occur? Statements of the form A is true or B is true are known as disjunctions in math and logic. So that's where the rule gets its name. There's a more general formulation for this rule, and there's a more restricted special case. In this video, we'll just deal with this special case, which occurs when the two events in question are mutually exclusive, meaning that they can't both occur at the same time. Let's consider dice rolls this time. The probability of any particular number, say a 2 or a 6, coming up on a single dice roll is 1 in 6, right? So what would be the probability of rolling either a 2 or a 6? Well, getting a 2 or a 6 is more likely than getting just one or the other by itself, so we know the probability is going to be higher. In this case, we can actually count the elementary outcomes to get the answer. There are six possible elementary outcomes, and the event in question picks out two of these outcomes. So the probability of getting a 2 or a 6 is just this ratio, which is equal to 2 over 6, or 1 third. The algebraic translation of this reasoning is straightforward. What you're doing is adding the probabilities of the individual outcomes. So the probability of getting a 2 or a 6 is equal to the probability of getting a 2 added to the probability of getting a 6, which is 2 and 6, or 1 third. And this is our rule. The probability of A or B is just the probability of A plus the probability of B. Now note the disclaimer. The rule only works in this simple form if A and B are mutually exclusive, meaning that they can't both occur at the same time. Either A occurs or B occurs, or neither occur, but they can't both occur at the same time. This is the case with our examples. You can't roll both a 2 and a 6 at the same time on a single dice roll. These are mutually exclusive outcomes. Similarly, you can't toss both a head and a tail on a single coin toss. Now let's look at another example. What is the probability of drawing either a face card or a 10 from a well-shuffled deck of playing cards? First, we'll need to make sure we've identified all the cards. The face cards include jacks, queens, and kings. The 10 is just a 10, so this is a total of four types of cards. So we'd write the probability of getting a face card or a 10 as just the probability of getting a jack or a queen or a king or a 10. Now, if these events are mutually exclusive, then we can apply the restricted disjunction rule. Are they? Sure they are. If you draw any one of these cards, you can't simultaneously draw any of the others. So they're all mutually exclusive. So our expression would look like this. The probability of drawing a jack or a queen or a king or a 10 is equal to the probability of drawing a jack plus the probability of drawing a queen plus the probability of drawing a king plus the probability of drawing a 10. Now what's the probability of drawing a jack? Well, there are four jacks and a deck of 52 cards, one for each suit. So the probability of drawing a jack is 4 out of 52. And this will be the same for all the cards. So this is our answer. The rest is just algebra. Note, however, that you can simplify the algebra by recognizing that 4 out of 52 is just 1 in 13. So the answer is 4 to 13, which is roughly 0.31 or 31%. And before we leave, we should look at this expression from the sample space perspective to get some additional insight into what it means. If you recall from the tutorial on negations, we showed that you can represent the total sample space by a unit area, call it omega. Subsets on this sample space represent events, and the probability of the event is just the area of the subspace as a fraction of the total sample space. The total sample space has area equal to 1. So the restricted disjunction rule looks like this graphically. Events A and B are represented by areas on the sample space. The larger the area, the larger the probability associated with the event. The probability of A or B occurring is represented by the sum of these areas. You just add up the areas of A and B, and the sum will obviously be a larger fraction of the total sample space. What it means to say that A and B are mutually exclusive is that these areas don't overlap. There are no regions of intersection. So if A occurs, B doesn't occur, and vice versa. Now, as we'll see in the next video, if A and B are not mutually exclusive, this means that their areas do overlap. And this would correspond to cases where A and B both occur at the same time. As a result, it's a bit trickier to calculate the sum of the areas. It's not a simple algebraic sum of the two areas taken separately. But we'll turn to this now in the next video.